We'd like to tell you about an important new study that's taking place, which you've got an opportunity to be involved with if you wish. It can be a matter of life or death, perhaps even your life or your death. This DVD is to tell you about some research that you might be interested in taking part in. The researchers you'll see in this DVD are all involved in running a study. This is a study about preventing deaths from heroin overdose. Please watch this DVD and then ask to see your addictions caseworker if you'd like some more information. The problem that NLive tackles is the very high risk of overdose deaths soon after release from prison. One in 200 uh, heroin injectors is dead from overdose in the first four weeks after release. And in Scotland, uh, those overdose deaths amount to one in eight of all our drugs-related deaths. We've known about this for over 10 years, and that's, of course, why prisons take steps to inform prisoners about the risks associated with heroin use once they leave prison. It's about the loss of tolerance, not to inject alone, how to identify overdose victims, and uh, what to do in the uh, should they see somebody take an overdose, uh, the ABC, if you like, of, uh, of uh, treating an overdose victim. When somebody is released from prison, uh, they have a number of things on their mind, uh, not least uh, seeing family and friends, but also celebrating and scoring are amongst those things. And so information about the risks of overdose and indeed what's the best thing to do is not sufficient. There is good news in that um, uh, we do know that those present at an overdose are willing to intervene, friends, family, are willing to intervene to help the overdose victim as much as possible, at the very least by just calling an ambulance. I need an ambulance. Yes, my friend, she's taking too much heroin. I think she had an overdose. The best things are to, to do right now is follow the ABC. A, for calling the ambulance, B, for checking their breathing and making sure that their airways are clear, and C, for getting them into the recovery position, and then finally wait until help arrives. Help can be delayed, and for some people, help comes too late. We have a treatment that we think could make a difference. We think it could make a difference, but we're not sure. And that's why we're doing the NLive study, giving an emergency injection of naloxone whilst waiting for the ambulance to turn up. NLive stands for a naloxone investigation, and it is the sensible next step in trying to reduce overdose deaths soon after release from prison. What the NLive trial will do is test out whether giving prisoners who have a history of heroin injection a take-home dose of naloxone will in fact reduce overdose deaths in the four weeks following release from prison by at least 30 percent. By randomised we mean the fact that each individual will have a 50-50 chance of receiving naloxone or n not receiving naloxone on release. That 50-50 split for each individual is done by a computer and is similar to tossing a coin. Half of the prisoners uh, who choose to participate in the trial uh, then on release they'll be given information about overdose management plus a supply of take-home naloxone uh, to carry with them. And for the other half, they'll get the regular information about overdose risks and how to prevent it, but without the take-home naloxone supply. But to ensure that we get a, a, a nationwide policy of naloxone on release for all prisoners, we have to show that it's both effective and cost-effective. And the only way of doing it is by doing such a study? Because we don't know for certain that we're right. It could be that there are 
negative effects and it could be that it's less successful than we think it's going to be. It's also a huge challenge to look at having distribution within a prison-based intervention. Uh, this would be very powerful and valuable if it was effective, but there are plenty of ways in which you could go wrong. And that's part of what we're having to test. And we're also having to test whether there could be unintended consequences, whether, whether there could be negatives which we hadn't anticipated. For example, if, if a prisoner on release uh, was perhaps more likely to use because they knew they had the antidote in their pocket. We actually need to prescribe naloxone to about 600 prisoners in order to have prevented one overdose death. The, the effectiveness depends upon three things. Somebody else being present at the overdose, the naloxone being present at the overdose, and that present other person to administer the naloxone. We think those three out of three uh, will be achieved in 30% of overdoses that occur in the first four weeks after release from prison. Anybody between the ages of 18 to 44 who are in prison for at least seven days and have a history of heroin injection use is eligible for this study. Those who can't take part are those who have uh, a history of a bad reaction to naloxone use, of some sort of allergic reaction, or who have been in prison within the last six months and have entered the NLive study already. The informed consent process ensures that the whole system is voluntary. So participation in the study is entirely voluntary and you have a one-to-one -one discussion with the NLive worker to ensure that you want to take part and that you understand what it means to take part. We will check the name, uh, sex, date of birth of our participants against a list of deaths in the United Kingdom of persons under 55 years of age. We're asking participants to give an additional consent uh, to be telephoned once only on the outside, either in the first or the second fortnight after release. And again, we'll ask questions over the telephone about what's happened to the naloxone and uh, about any overdoses that you might have experienced or witnessed. One of the real problems for a lot of people is the worry that their partner or that their mother uh, might look at this needle and syringe that they've been given as a take-home pack and think it means they're back on drugs. And it's extremely important that you make sure that your family and the people around you know about the emergency naloxone you're carrying with you. It's like an emergency antidote just like one might give to somebody if they were diabetic or had epilepsy or had a severe allergy to bee stings, for example. We're wanting to make sure that that antidote is very close to the person if the disaster were to occur. And your family need to know about it, your friends and your, and your partner need to know about that. It's very important that they tell everyone about the naloxone and the use of the naloxone because if it's lying, you know, if they have it, then they should be able to use it. But uh, I know that they will be reluctant in some cases to talk to maybe especially mum or dad because it makes it look as if they're going to start taking drugs again. But wouldn't it be better that they had that information rather than find out after an overdose that, uh, you know, that they could have helped? Most family members and friends will want to know how to administer naloxone. They will want to know where you've got it, where it's kept, and how to administer it in a case of emergency. And I think to ensure and inform your family member that you've got that naloxone and show them the DVD on how it's administered, then it will, will probably help to alleviate a lot of the fears that your family partner or friend have got themselves. 
uh, or you might want to look it up uh, by looking up NLive on YouTube to actually show them this DVD about what the trial is, what they need to know about how to give emergency naloxone and to call an ambulance, etc. As a research investigating group, we're completely independent of the prison system. So we work either in the Medical Research Council uh, or in the NHS or the university. Uh, in my part, I'm part at the uh, university, part in the NHS at the National Addiction Centre. So we're completely independent of the prison system, but we're looking at whether this important measure delivered as somebody is leaving the prison system could successfully save lives. But we have worked closely with the prisons designing the NLive trial because the prison services in both countries, just as the research team, cares very much about the problem of overdose death soon after release from prison and want to find an effective and affordable means of reducing those overdose deaths. Participation in this study is entirely voluntary and you have a one-to-one -one discussion with the NLive worker to ensure that you want to take part and that you understand what it means to take part. Please open your NLive pack immediately you receive it on release from prison. And if you've been assigned to naloxone, please carry it with you.